Hi there, I have a quick question before we get started. How would you like to win a one-on-one virtual coaching session with me to discuss your art business? I know I would love to connect with you. A one-on-one coaching call is a powerful way to help you move forward on your artist journey. Whether you need help thinking through your art website, setting up an art routine, or organizing your first exhibition, a personal coaching session will help you take your next steps. Here's how you can become a lucky winner. And it's really simple. Head over to the Help I'm Artist podcast community Facebook group. It's my brand spanking new community for visual artists who are wanting to connect with other creatives and me in a more deeper, personable way. I've started this group for artists who are ready to take bold, brave steps to turn their creativity into a meaningful, sustainable art business. Each week, you'll find me in this group where I'll be sharing live teachings, new insights, practical tips, and more about the featured podcasts. It's a place of connection, learning, and inspiration. So to celebrate this brand spanking new art community, I'm offering a free in-person coaching call to one lucky subscriber who joins the group this week. At the end of the week, I'll be drawing the name of one lucky artist. And this could be you. If I draw your name, I'll be getting in touch with you about this free coaching call. So head over to the Help I'm Artist podcast community, Facebook group and join in today. You'll find the link in the notes wherever you're listening to this podcast. Leave your studio and visit galleries all over the world, not only for your own uh, for your own art, but to to watch how galleries in other countries and other cities and other work. And where, where do you feel at home? And and that place you should look for because I think when you paint yourself or make sculptures and you love what you do, then you want your art to be on a place you love. Because when not, I think it's not representing you in, in the best possible way. And I think when you work for a month or longer on a piece or only for a week, it doesn't matter. But when you put your heart in your work, you, know, you it deserves a place you love. My name is Sonia Small here. I'm an artist, an art coach, and a course creator. When I graduated from the Art Academy, I had learned how to paint and how to draw, but I had no idea how to earn a living with my creativity. I was not prepared for the life as a working artist. This often left me quite frustrated, sometimes on the verge of calling it quits, throwing away my brushes, and giving it all up. But I'm so glad I didn't. After many failed attempts and valuable lessons learned, I've discovered ways to turn my creative dream of being a working artist into a reality, now giving me the freedom to live the life I love. I created the Help I Am Artist podcast because no matter where you are on your journey, whether you're just starting out or maybe you've been a working artist for a while, you too can take steps to turn your creative passions into a meaningful, sustainable profession. The Help I'm Artist podcast is filled with fresh inspiration, step-by-step practical insights, and interviews with artists who are experts in their field. If you're a smart artist, or one in the making, who is looking for new and exciting ways to get your art out of your studio, and into the hands and hearts of an audience that's appreciative and willing to pay its worth, then you're in the right place. Happy listening. Are you curious about the world behind the gallery door and how galleries actually choose the artists that they represent? Are you a working artist looking for gallery representation and you're wondering what the best way is to connect with a gallery? If this is you, then I have a treat for you today. I had the privilege to interview gallerist David van der Linde for this episode. David and his partner René own and run the beautiful gallery Bonnard in the south of the Netherlands. In this episode, David lifts the curtain to the world behind that gallery door and shares practical tips and insights for artists that are considering 
gallery representation. So, David, thank you for joining me for this uh, conversation all about art and the world behind the gallery door. Thank you for the time for, uh, for this interview. And uh, please, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Your name is David, but please fill in the blanks. Where do you live and what do you do? Uh, well, I'm David, and together with uh, René, my partner, husband, we, I own the gallery. I own Carlo Bonat in uh, Lina. It, it, it was for a long time, art was just a passion. We made it uh, to our living, and that's, well, a big dream coming true. So in, before I had a, a gallery, I was a teacher and I was a psychologist. Well, I always liked to work with uh, people, and that's mainly the red uh, continuing story. Uh, I don't know in English, but that's what I always do. Talk with people, uh, tell about what I like and what I think and what I feel. And uh, well, with art, it's... I think it's the same. We, we, we show what we like, we, we tell why we like it. It's, it's, it's every day a new pleasure to work with art. Wow. So that's, I think, the most important thing for, for our gallery, that we love art and we like art. We like to talk with people about art. Mm. Uh, that's for me and that's for René too. Just uh, let's start off with uh, the gallery in Nuna. That's a place that, if you know a little bit of art history, that should ring a bell for people, but just yeah. tell us what makes Nuna such a special place. Well, uh, for, for us, Nuna um, was always a place where we went through with our bikes. We always saw, oh, it's such a cozy village because of the old buildings. And uh, later, we I read the, the, the letters of Vincent van Gogh, and then for the first time, I didn't know it, but then for the first time, I realized that Vincent van Gogh made his first steps as an artist in Nuna. And then we learned about the history of Nuna and the history of Vincent van Gogh in Nuna and about the potato eaters, about the little church. It was not the best period of van Gogh. He didn't like it here at all. But, uh, well, his paintings are very famous. And, uh, and that because of that, Nuna is very famous. Because in his paintings, you see Nuna uh, 100 years ago. And the opposite of the gallery, there's the house where Vincent van Gogh with his, lived with his parents. It's, it's always a pleasure to to, to tell to people, but yeah. like, if you want, you can yeah. look to the house of wow. the And can you just briefly tell us about your gallery? How would you describe your vision for the gallery, Bonar? We are a gallery for modern realism, and it always has been. In the period that the gallery started, in 1984, art has to be expressionism, has to be with a lot of colors, it had to be just emotion or very abstract. And then Franz Sars, the first owner of the gallery, started with uh, realism, and people thought, realism, that's old-fashioned, that's a long time ago. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but it came, became very popular. Well, he was a very classical-oriented uh, art gallery with uh, still lives, very beautiful, dark still lives uh, from different artists. And he developed too because he showed some uh, impressionists then, uh, impressionists from that moment, like Louis van Beze from Belgium and Jos Leurs from Holland. Le Bonnard became really a popular place, not only in Holland, but very international. When we uh, decided to take over uh, the place, the, gal the gallery, not the place, we, we did two things. We, we, we moved, we went to another place uh, in the middle of Nuna uh, with a lot of space and big windows because we think you have to show what you've got. So, and we've got beautiful art, so without windows we can't show it. We um, also decided to stop with most of the artists. We, we wanted to show how beautiful and how different good art can be. And uh, we believe in modern realism. As you know, in our gallery, we have very um, hyper-realistic art, but we also have very impressionist art. Uh, for example, I mean, when you know the work of Mitzi Renoy and you know the work of Heidi von Faber, mm -hmm. they, are, they are completely different, completely different styles, but together they show the whole range of uh, modern realism. And in total, we have 90 artists now. So every six weeks we have a new exhibition, and in every exhibition there is a lot of news to see. Yeah. So it's very dynamic. And you would just work with Dutch artists? We started with just Dutch artists, but after that I went to summer school in St. Petersburg in Russia. I wanted to learn some interesting artists. Those were the first artists from a foreign country, the artists from Spain now and Germany. Our clients are coming from all over the world. When you like something, yeah, you, it, it doesn't matter where it comes from. So and good art doesn't have borders. Doesn't I think. have borders. Uh, correct. Because yesterday, uh, for example, a Dutch artist, Abel Modema, called me and he said, oh, I know a, an American guy and well, he makes beautiful art. He's, he's very young, but uh, well, maybe you like it. 
Well, and then we go and look for it and uh, have contact and, and go and follow because well, something, someone can, very be, can be very interesting, but that's one. And then you have to think about what would it, what place would he get in our gallery and uh, how could we combine it with other artists? And uh, well, you have to, we have to have a good feeling with the person and with the art. How do you go about as a team to choose who you're going to represent and how you're going to arrange the exhibitions? Well, first, there has to be quality. Second, it has to fit in our uh, modern realistic style. Because I can like some very abstract painters, but they, does, they, they do not fit in our gallery. And not because they are not good, but it's not the form of art we want to represent. You can say that all our art is based on a fundament of classic education. The better you understand the theory, the, the, the more freedom you can allow yourself in your painting. And still it, it is something you can understand. It's what we look for. We, we want to understand it. We want to understand why an artist made the choices. We don't have to like it. We can say it's very good, yeah. but it's not my yeah. well, yeah. my style. Uh, I would yeah. bring home, but, but it's beautiful made. It's made mm. beautiful. And then I can feel enthusiastic about it. And then I get, uh, yeah, I want to know everything about how the artist did it. And mm. uh, then there is a sort of... Uh, passion coming and then we think oh maybe we can uh, represent this artist in our gallery it is very important the feeling with the art and the artist yeah i think very simple I mean, when i like it when i think it's good somebody else will like it too but it has to fit in our collection so those two things are very important and it's not a decision in one minute but sometimes it is yeah sometimes it is yeah a feeling. Then it's just something and you, it fits. Yeah. In every word, it fits. And let's just go back to that skill, like uh, the quality of the work. Is it something that you see straight away? It's like, is it something that you just have an eye for? I think I learned to have an eye for it because 10 years ago, I watched in a different way. I think at the academy, I learned a lot about what good art is. At the academy, we learned watching art. And what in a painting makes the painting interesting? When, when you look to a painting the first time, you, you know in a moment if it's a painting that suits you or not. And, and, and when a painting suits me, it is a good painting. And I learned to, to see some objective quality in it, the color, the, the space, the, the composition first. Yeah. So there's the color, there's the composition, there's the space. What else do you look for? Well, the first thing, it's the, the, the own story of the artist. I can guarantee that all our artists can have the, the ability to tell their own story. And when an artist is copying something, it's, well, you see it in a moment. It's not of their own. And that's, I can't explain why, but you can see it. You can see it if an artist is trying to make something for uh, just a good selling or a good prize or or is she is making something what really feels good for her. And there has to be a story in the painting. Mm. If there's not a story, um, uh, it's, well, it, it can be well painted, but it's not, it's not touching you. Mm. That's very difficult, but what, what can be a story for me doesn't have to be a story for you too. Mm. So then, then you are arriving the point, the gray scale, so mm. what's in it or what's yeah, yeah, that's yeah. difficult but the, the, those objective things the quality of color is very important in, in painting when the when the color is the same everywhere mm -hmm. it's uh, it's flat we see a lot of flat paintings uh, the, the colors can be beautiful but it's not organized mm -hmm. there has to be an organization in, in the painting mm -hmm. then you can watch it every time again because uh, you still you, you every, every time you see new things yeah. and that's what what for me art makes uh, very special. And then what what happens from that moment? Well, for example, later the, later today, an artist from Germany will come, and uh, we've met on Instagram. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, uh, she's very active. She uh, she tells a lot about herself, how she like, how she loves to paint, how she loves to draw. Her name is Tanya Rivilis. And she, she's from Russia. She uh, now lives in, in Germany. She has a, a job and a very creative job, but not as an artist, but she paints and she studied art in St. Petersburg. I follow her, I think, for maybe five or six years and I, I see a continuum of uh, progression. 
uh, and she surprises me every uh, yeah every now and then a, a lot. And the last year, she surprises me with every painting she makes. And uh, I said, oh, wow, wow! Every time I, it's totally new and it's very it's very good, very very uh, well developed. And it's 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 so special. I couldn't imagine that it could exist. That's when you when you start to feel in love with something. Eh? You think, oh, wow, it's so beautiful, it's so strange, it's so of herself. And she came to uh, our, to visit our gallery. Uh, she wanted to watch the exhibition of Xenia Istomina, and we had the Russian artist. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's very inter- very in- very important for us too. She comes all the way from Germany to watch our gallery, to meet, to see another artist. She's not only interested in in her own business, so, but she's also interested in, in us, yeah. gallery, and who we are, yeah. and and in other artists. Mm. I think we, we get a lot of emails every day on Instagram, Facebook, and email, in our WhatsApp. And then a lot of times, I, I hello, my name is, mm-hmm. I think you don't know me, but I follow you. I love your gallery. I think I would fit in there. Here are some pictures of my art. Mm. Please let me know. Well, mm. then I, I, I think, well, a little more interest, please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, w- why our gallery? Yeah. Tell me. You don't have to sell yourself, but mm. please tell a little bit more. And why are you interested in this? How do you think you will fit in it? Why? And, and that's not enough. And then I, th- th- when you do that as an artist, when you mail 100 galleries, mm-hmm. I can assure you, well, you have to be very good, very, 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 very good when someone picks you up that way. Tanya, the kitchen, I, we, we knew each other, we followed each other. Mm-hmm. She was interested in us, I was interested in her. And now today she comes with, I think, five or six uh, paintings. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk about the frame. And uh, she has an exhibition in September mm-hmm. uh, together with three other artists. It, it's, it's a story of two years. Yeah. And interesting that social media plays such a role in that. Yeah. That her portfolio, portfolio, her yeah. life story yeah. has been made visible through the, her social feeds. You've yeah. been following her for six years and been uh, seen close by her development. And so yes. it's not something that just happened. I mean, you said sometimes you fall in love like this. It's, uh, yeah. But yeah. usually it's, it sounds like you really value relationship. And yes. that's a mutual relationship. And that's when it can work. Not just yeah. the, the speed date of sending that email <laughs> and then <laughs> hoping and wishing. So that would yeah. be a key to you know the artists that are listening for yes. uh, for them to to know that that's um, important to build that relationship and also how they show their work on their Instagram feeds and what they communicate yeah. on their social platforms. We are normal people, so re- um, for us, relation is very important. I think for all people, yeah. and in in this gallery, there is our. All we have, we did put in this gallery. What advice would you give artists that are seriously thinking about looking for gallery representation? What I would advise is go and, and visit galleries. Leave your studio and visit galleries all over the world. Shake hands and, uh, well, and when you are, are on a holiday, every, every artist travels because that's the best school you can have. Either. Go and visit galleries too, not only for your own, uh, for your own art, but to, to watch how galleries in other countries, in other cities, in other work, and where, where do you feel at home? And, and that place you should look for, because I think when you paint yourself or make sculptures and you love what you do, then you want your art to be on a place you love, because when not, I think it's not representing you in, in the best possible way. And I think when you work for a month or longer, on a piece or only for a week, it doesn't matter. But when you put your heart in your work, you know, you, it deserves a place you love. Mm. Then the next step is then uh, making contact and tell, uh, and tell them why you choose that gallery. What, what, what do you like in, in the gallery? And why do you think your work fits in it? It has to, you don't, you don't have to be um, three pages with or high intellectual, uh, mm. artistic, uh, <laughs> No, just uh, speak Real. about what you like and what you think is important and, yeah. and ask for uh, an appointment. Yeah. Do not only say, well, you can visit my atelier or my studio at any time, but is it possible to visit you in your gallery? And I can say, oh, no, you don't have to come to our gallery. We will come to your studio. Mm-hmm. But then I think, oh, she or he is really interested. Yeah. That's very important. Yeah. 
So if I hear you correctly, then an email is the best first step. What do the emails uh, look like that you open that attract your attention? More than five uh, sentences and not high gallery with high David or high René or for high René and David. Yeah, <laughs> showing interest uh, so that they've done their yeah. homework, they know what it's about. Yeah. So show your uh, show that you know where you're mailing to or going to, and, uh, and 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 tell them a little bit about your work and your where you come from, what you try to, to to tell what you look for. And I can say, well, I I sometimes I, I see art and I think, oh, it's interesting, but not for us. But uh, I read what he or she is looking for, and I know a gallery mm. who, who who would fit because our gallery. Not all, but most of the galleries we are very good with. Uh, we can talk, we, we like each other, we are yeah. in the same business and yeah. we are not... Uh, in competition. Are, no, no competition no. at all. Yeah. yeah, so you give each other. So the, you refer uh, those artists then to another gallery. So yeah, if yeah. you say, uh, what are you looking for? So if the artist needs to explain that in the email, it's more their vision, what their... their goal is or what they want with their art or yes. their art story yes. speak, yourself out. speak yourself out don't uh, don't be afraid about who you are and what you want because well it's it's like when you when you have a blind date you can in a blind date you can uh, make uh, yourself the most beautiful person in the world but i think the best thing is to to show who you are and yeah. that's exactly the same with with, with working with the gallery, yeah. show who you are. Because when it doesn't fit, well, it doesn't fit. Yeah. Uh, that's no problem, there, there will be another place. Yeah. And first of all, have it, for, be critical about your own work. So I we also get a lot of very short meals from people who really are not ready for exhibition or uh, in a, they, they should first study for years and years yeah. and uh, not on an academy, academy but study in their own yeah. don't think oh i paint and i need a gallery no you can paint that because you love it you do, you do not need a gallery and you love to paint well there's nothing yeah. wrong with that when you are a piano player i play the saxophone but i do it at my own uh, in my own studio mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 with my saxophone teacher but i do not want to play in the in in, in a big uh, uh, jazz orchestra, or I, I would I love to in my dreams, but I know well. Then I have to study, study. study. I don't, I don't have, don't have the ambition. I, I'm not good enough for it. I don't have the skills, and nothing wrong with that because I love the saxophone. But yeah, and then you have a quite an active client base, and I see you yeah. and I follow you on Instagram too, and you have your newsletters. So that's something that you really are building your business around your clients. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Everyone is free is free to come, mm -hmm. and we do not believe in. Um, we believe in low profile okay. you, you, and you know, high quality and low profile. I mean, it's for everyone. Art is not only for the for the one who uh, are on a list. We, we drive around the whole country with art and we come in the most beautiful places, but also in very normal houses. Or last week we were in a house and um, the guy really loves art and he bought a lot in our, uh, but it's it's a, it's a small studio he lives in, and uh, he said, yeah, I, I can't afford to have a, a bigger house because then I can't buy My art. art. <laughs> so that's, and, and, yeah. and, and a lot of people with a big car and a big house say, oh, I can't afford art. No. So <laughs> we can buy everyone. It's not about yeah how much you have to spend yeah. or how, how much you know about art or mm. how many you already have. Uh, yeah. It's... It's not important. When you like to come, you're welcome. Yeah. And we think that's the main reason that uh, people visit us uh, without feeling. Um, yeah. There's uh, that glass door uh, that you can't come in. There's that high yeah, threshold yeah, yeah. that it's yeah, exclusive. Or, or they are not. It, it's not so that when you visit our gallery, you have to buy something. Yeah. We like it, but you don't have to, and you can come every week. It's so that's we, we think it's very important. Yeah. yeah. So then the opening has been, people have been able to see, does the actual business happen at the opening or how does that work? When we would know how that exactly works, when someone buys a painting or not, well, um, uh, it's a, so, there, there's a little magic in it. A lot of the times people buy a painting, buy a painting or a sculpture, they are not coming to visit us to buy a painting. They come to visit us, it suddenly it happens. 
just name some reasons why people buy art. Uh, sometimes, uh, well, just because they love it and they really don't know why. Mm -hmm. uh, because they, it, it, it uh, made them, it makes them thinking about some beautiful experiences uh, they ever had. Mm -hmm. uh, they are they are fascinated by the technique they see. They uh, are fascinated by the story they feel, they experience. They are fascinated by the colors sometimes. And we really have people who like to collect art, uh, sometimes because they are touched by the painting. We have had an exhibition about Vincent van Gogh, and then an artist made a painting about his uh, psychiatric uh, problems, his depressions and his mood and his fear. And because she experienced for a while in her life the same, and I really love her and I love her work, but I see her in the work and it moves me because I think, oh, that has to, it must have been terrible for her. Yeah. Bought that painting because of that strong mood in the, in the mm -hmm. painting. They, they like it because they experience something from their own in that painting. So you have the clients that come that are from America, for example, then it gets shipped there or they see it, they yeah. buy it at face value, they, they've seen photos, images of it. How does that work? Yeah. Sometimes people send pictures of their homes and uh, the, the walls where they want the painting and they ask us, do you have something for it? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they say, um, uh, what do you think about this painting on that place? And then we do it with Photoshop. We put the painting on the right place and then uh, people like it or not. You know, they can see, really see it in their own home. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it's funny because we did Photoshop. A client in Texas, she bought three paintings in, uh, in our gallery at, at, what, at the same time. And we Photoshopped them in the right places and then after a month the painters were there and she had to put them on the wall and on those places and it well, we hardly could see the difference wow. uh, between <laughs> our photoshop and the, the, the real the only difference was that the dog was sitting up on the <laughs> yeah we like that a lot mm. so for us when we started the gallery we didn't expect it at all yeah. and that's the advantage of internet of that's you know the world is your oyster it can be all over the place but we are busy with that, uh, I think, two or three days a week. Uh, we do nothing, only internet. And that's all kind of things you even can't see in the front. The backside of a website, there is a lot of work to mm. push it. Okay, so that, yeah, it's not just hanging up a painting in the gallery. There's a whole no. system and uh, work behind no. that to, to put you yeah. in a position to be able to sell. David, you're an artist yourself, so you know what it's like to work as an artist and the artist life and the passion that drives artists. And you're a businessman, you have the galleries. And what advice would you give artists that are wanting to turn their creativity, they want to turn their art into a profession? First, look for good criticasters, you know, look for people who are honest. When you, when you make your own work, you love it or you hate it maybe some days, but, but only people who are not. You, you, you need people who teach you. Everyone needs people for advice or for coaching or for... And I think it's good to know that you do not know everything yourself. So that's also with Oordele. Uh, it's like having a critique session with judge, with yeah, judging is a strong word. Very important. And, and then don't take it personal. Yeah. yeah? And uh, okay, uh, René, my, my partner, he's very honest. And yeah. it's very difficult sometimes. But I ask him, please be honest. And then he is honest. I said, oh. <laughs> "Why are you so honest?" <laughs> so then, and I have had a few teachers, of course, who I trust very much, uh, mm -hmm. like Ken McCoy. Um, uh, when I'm not sure about things, I call him and I send pictures. And uh, I do not always agree with him. It makes me think about what I did with my painting. Yeah. Never think you could. But well, it's not. It's not, not. It does not make you happy. Uh, maybe it makes you a little unsure about your work, yeah. but I think it's very good for an artist to be a little unsure about what you do. Yeah. So that is your tip number one for the artist. Develop a critical eye, have people look at yeah. your work, have a learning spirit, being open to learn and develop. Anything else before we close off? Do have that critical eye, but also be uh, who you are. Are not afraid of who you are and love your own uh, style. Mm. That's something I learned from Sam Drucker, and uh, we had a, I, I followed the master class of Sam Drucker, who I think is a is a remarkable a man as a painter. person, and yeah. teacher, yeah. and a very good painter. Mm -hmm. But he said it's very important to learn to love your own style because when you look to other paintings, you look to other styles, other persons, and when you look to your own work, 
you look to, to yourself and it can be annoying to see who you are, how you work, but it's, it's your style. Mm. Enjoy it. First, you have to, to look really deep into your heart. What do you, why do you want to be an artist? Why do you want to be an artist to show how beautiful an apple is? Or do you want to be an artist to, well, why? Yeah. The why question, that's where it starts. And that's why it's and where it starts coming. and that's where the first painting starts. Yes, mm. yes. Yeah. David, it's like having a five-course meal talking with you. <laughs> so much information. <laughs> so uh, very valuable. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, You're welcome for your interest and for yeah. listening. Yeah. <laughs> Pleasure. I hope our conversation inspired you as much as it did me. That David's stories have given you more insights into the life of the gallerist and how gallery representation actually works. If you're wanting to find and follow David and Renee and Gallery Bonnard, then head over to the notes where you're listening to this episode. Here you'll find their details and the artists that David mentioned in our conversation. That's all for this week. Join me again next time for another episode of the Help I'm Artist podcast. And if you don't want to miss an episode, then you can subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening to this episode. And please leave a review as this will mean the world to me and will make the podcast more visible and easier for other artists to find it. Thanks for that. Have an amazing week and I look forward to connecting with you next time. Until then.